Hi guys, uh, Tony Riggs, Chief Instructor of Yarn Martial Arts. Uh, obviously in previous videos you had Instructor Jack talking about his journey on the martial arts and you had Re young Rihanna on her journey on martial arts. Today we're going to be in a two part one, so it's going to be two parts guys because I'm actually going to talk about my journey and how Yarn Martial Arts evolved through all that. Uh, and, and my, my values and my mindset and w in, in the way it went uh, and how it started. Uh, it's been a long journey. Uh, I started doing martial arts when I was 15. I'm now 58, so you can imagine it's a lot of years. And basically, to give you an idea, it's been a, an, an up and down journey. Uh, I have had time out of it, uh, but I'll, I'll explain that shortly. But what I want you to get out of this is, is, is the longevity of everything. Uh, not just about the journey of the martial arts, but obviously how things contrive to take decisions and the way you work it and stuff like that. So it, it's a bit of a, you know, a, about one person's journey. Um, like I said, I started in, when I was 15 year old. Uh, how it came about was basically, unfortunately my father died when I was 14, 15. And uh, we've come from a small family. And bear in mind, this is the late 70s. And life was okay, so totally different to what it is now. Uh, had a great bringing up, had a great family life, uh, but obviously, you, as a young man, you had to make sure you could defend yourself, because most arguments always in my time always ended up in a bit of a scuffle uh, from the area I was brought up in. So I was thinking I need to, you know, learn how to protect myself even more. At that particular time, the Bruce Lee films had just come out. And in the, I used to be a paper boy, so I used to every morning have a two two rounds to do deliver in the morning and two rounds on the night. And uh, Mr. Elwine, Elwine news agents on Parliament Road in Middlesbrough, and worked there for a good few years. And these magazines, these little fold up magazines, came out. Obviously, in those days, we didn't have the internet, you didn't have YouTube to go and see. And these little fold out magazines was the basic. What actually happened is. You turned it up three times, then turned it out. So you had loads of information on the back, and then eventually it would open out into a big poster about this big of Bruce Lee. Now, this particular magazine I actually bought was about Bruce Lee and the journey of Bruce Lee, and obviously the death of Bruce Lee and what is. So that got me interested in the martial arts. That was the start. Like most martial artists, it always revolved around Bruce Lee. He was the one that catalyst that a lot of people know. And people who don't do martial arts, a lot of people, you know who Bruce Lee is. Those who are not too sure, Bruce Lee was a martial artist, uh, Kung Fu Wing Chun martial artist, who became a film star. He created his own method of JKD, uh, Jeet Kune Do. Also, he, he learned a lot of stuff from different areas. Ju Fan, he created Ju Fan. From Ju Fan, he went to JKD. And obviously, he became a big, massive movie star with Enter the Dragon, Game of Death, uh, Where the Dragon stuff films like that so if you ever go go and have a look at them because they're a really good cinematic change of how fight scenes were suddenly changed by bruce and stuff like that but by the by that's how we learn then the next magazine i bought was i need to learn how to do martial arts now at the time i didn't know there was martial arts or karate in my local area so i bought this book or like little magazine that showed you karate so I thought, oh, this is a start. So I was practicing at home. And then, unbeknown to me, some of my friends actually had joined a karate club. Uh, and they, we were just talking and mentioned it. Uh, we are on about Bruce Lee. Because some of my friends were older than me. They were like 16, 17. And they'd actually were starting work and doing apprenticeships and obviously could afford to go and do their own karate lessons. So they'd gone and done it and introduced me to the club, went down, did my first lesson. Uh, I'm a very first instructor, old, a guy called Jim, lovely human being, absolutely brilliant and that's when I learnt my first block, my first punch and my first kick and it was Shutokai Karate, that was the style, okay, so that started in when I was 15 going on 16. In that period I got up to uh, first queue, uh, going to go from a black belt and then Various things got in the way, so we didn't quite get our black belt in that, uh, although I was training for the black belt. Come away from that and did kickboxing. But in that period, I was away competing every weekend uh, with the team. We became very successful. Uh, I was captain of the B team at one point. Uh, went for England trials when the Shutter Kai banner. 
uh, England national trials. Didn't quite make the squad or the team, but some of the lads who I uh, trained with, they got into the team, actually their team, and travelled around Europe with this Shuttakai team, and actually uh, were in the first team. Uh, the, the Middlesbrough Shuttakai Club actually uh, won what we call the EKB, the English Karate Board, one year actually won it. They, were in, they came second and third, two bounces, two years in the trials, and when one year actually won it. Uh, the B team, we never got further than the sixth round or the fifth round because uh, we were just more support fighters. Uh, but we went, like I say, we went around doing individual competitions, became area northern cat champion uh, for one year, uh, junior cat when I was a uh, purple belt, and became junior cat champion for the whole of the north and stuff like that. So, so it was a great journey. Then we ch changed it from that, kickboxing came out. Now, a lot of you think, see kickboxing at the moment as MMA, Thai boxing, uh, what you call a K1, stuff, stuff like that. But the kickboxing actually came was a, uh, was an organisation called Professional Karate Association. And basically it was boxing with kicking him. And it was developed in the six, late 60s and it became quite a big sport. You ended up with the... Uh, World Organization, the WKO, which is still still going on today, which was the amateur version of the PK, which developed into a whole different realm as well. And one of the guys who was training with was my ex brother law Tony, Tony Trimble, who eventually actually went on to become Hong Kong Thai kickboxing champion over in Hong Kong, and actually ended up having his own uh, local media show as a fitness instructor. He still lives out there, he's retired now. Uh, but he still t he teaches Hong Kong police and has his own little uh, fitness in, uh, academy over there now. But basically, uh, he went off and learned, went on to a seminar with uh, ex world champion kickboxer. Came back was absolutely enthusiastic. Now in those days, all we had in our area was Wanderu Karate and Shutokai Karate. Now if you can imagine opening going down to a, a competition for the first time and actually saying Shutokan Karate, Shutokai Karate, Wadaru Karate, Wadakai Karate, okay? Then in the same competition you had Lao Gia Kung Fu, Wing Chun Kung Fu, yeah? You also had Taekwondo in it because it was a multi-styles competition, the first one I ever went to. And seeing all these different styles just absolutely blew my mind because I thought it was only Kung Fu and Karate. Didn't realise that I found out later on there was Thai boxing when eventually in the early 80s, okay, uh, the two brothers, well, I can't remember at the moment, but the two brothers, Thai boxing brothers, that are set up in, in, in Manchester. So you can see how I could see this developing as, uh, around the country. But basically from there, that was my line. So going back to Jim, okay, he instilled a lot of what I believe in now in martial arts, that you train to be a black belt, it takes longevity, you have to have perseverance, you have to have courtesy for the people you're training with, and basically you have to try your best at all times when you're on the floor. And, and from that still, it set me up really well. And from there we went to, like I say, we went to kickboxing, and Tony really was got enthusiastic, and he got in touch, he got in touch with a guy called Tony Goldfield, who was setting up his own club. So the two of them set up Minnesota Kickboxing Club, and it became a quite a successful kickboxing club, because in the various situ associations that were setting up, at one point we had two lightweight champions, British champions, we had a middleweight champion, we had uh, a welterweight, two welterweight champions at the same time. Obviously that was developed over, over a period of years. Uh, when I got to around about 25, 26, then it was like life got in the way. Got married, had children, and basically had to, you know, couldn't commit to much as I wanted to. And also, it was like, I got a little bit lost with the martial arts because I had no avenue of where I was going to go because I was just training, being made sparring partner for, for, for most of the lads who were at the, the club at the time I was there. The club went on to be more successful. I pulled away from it and took up long distance running. So that was my period out because I wanted to do other things. Uh, so basically, that was the long, and I started doing long distance. So I had a few years out of that. Uh, but still kept practicing martial arts in the garage or in the, you know in the garden or whatever you know I was doing it as a complementation to the middle distance running I was doing and the long distance run because I was doing a lot of stuff for charity but basically that was the period I had out so I'd learned from coming as 15 year old 
up to about 25. So it was 10 years of actually martial arts training where I'd learn about a whole lot of, of stuff going out there. So what I think I'll do, that, guys, is leave it there. So I'll give you the early part of my training. Leave it there, okay? And then part two, tell you from the extension from when I came back into martial arts, how I started and where we are today. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. If you want to see the previous one, simply click the video above. And if you want to see the playlist for the, my journey, simply click this, this video below. And then from there, guys, if you want to see more videos about everything that's happening on the Our Martial Arts YouTube channel, simply subscribe, guys. And we look forward to seeing you watching our videos. Take care now. Have a great day. All the best.